Today I'm working with Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox. This is episode number 53 of the Creative Toolbox series. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is episode number 53 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. By the way, you can download this stock image. I'm leaving a link in the description below this video so you can follow along with me if you'd like to. I started out in Photoshop by duplicating the background layer and naming it Topaz Studio 2 so we won't be working on the background layer. And then all we need to do is come up to Filter and find Topaz Studio 2. Click on that. We'll launch Topaz Studio 2 and let's get right at it. We're going to turn this really cool flower image. I really like the vase and the way it's presented here. We're going to turn it into a piece of digital art. I'm going to do it a little different this time. We're going to come up to add filter. I normally don't add a precision detail filter first, but I decided I'm going to try this. I want to add extra detail and then take detail away. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but I think it really worked on this image. We have overall detail. We can work with shadows and highlights. I'm only working with overall. We're going to start with small details and I'm going to bump that up to like a 35 and you can see the extra detail popping out in here. And then the medium detail, I'm going to take it up to right about a 51 just to pull out some of that extra detail. And then with the uh, large detail, I'm going to pull back the large detail and take some of that large detail away. And I think right there at a minus 0.30. Now, if we click on this eye right here, we can see there's the before and there's the after. But hopefully you can see that extra detail on there. And the next filter I want to add is one of my favorites, the impression filter. Now, I'm going to keep it very simple here. I'm just going to use this first paintbrush. Now, I tried different brushes. And you can click through here and try these different brushes and see how they look. But I ended up with Type 01. I thought that one worked really well. The second thing I do is come the whole way down to Texture. Open up Texture and come the whole way down to the bottom. You see right here where it says Background Type, Solid or Original. And again, I always mention you see these little white flecks. This is like the underlying canvas showing through. And right now the background of that underlying canvas is white. You can change that to like any color of a background that you want. You can see that. Uh, you know, you can make it really dark or really light, whatever you want to do. In my case, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to click original. So we see just the original uh, image. We don't see any canvas showing through. And sometimes you do want that canvas, but in this case, I don't. Now, after I've picked my brush size, I usually like to come down to number of strokes and determine do I want low. Let's click on low. It's going to be more abstract, medium, or high. In this case, I think I'm going to go with low. And now let's work with a brush size. Now the brush size is at 50. We can make the brush a lot larger and see, make it really look crazy and abstract. But I want mine right here. Let's say 0.34 looks pretty good. And then as far as paint volume, I'm going to pull this up and watch the background here when I pull up the paint volume. See how that background starts showing through? You start seeing those paint strokes really starting to show through, which is really what I want. Now, I don't want that much. I think I'm going to take it back to like right here, like a 53. I think that's going to be fine. And then as far as paint opacity is concerned, I'm going to pull this up. Now, watch how that paint looks when I start to really pull this up. See how you can really see the paint starting to show? It gets more, you know, predominant. And I want to pull that up to probably right there, like a 0.78. Don't forget, you have this overall opacity here. You can drag this back if you want to, you know, lighten up on the effect on the image. But I want that up the whole way, and I like it so far. And if you left click in this area right here with your mouse, you can see the overall before. Release your mouse, here's the after. And I like it, but now I'm going to do something really different and that is come up here and add another filter and now I'm going to take detail away again I know I added detail went to the impression filter but now I'm going to the abstraction filter which is a detail removing filter I'm only going to use one adjustment slider and that's simplify size I'm going to drag it to the right and you see how the detail is starting to be removed from the image and I want to bring it to right here at like a 0.31 now let's click on the eye. Here is the before and here is the after. 
Now let's click the before again. You see these little areas of the flower here, the centers of the flower. I want to bring those back and I'm going to use layer masking to bring those back. So let's turn this back on so we can see it. Let's click on the uh, layer mask icon. Let's click on the brush and we want to use black transparency, which is where it's set at right now. And now let's get a brush size and you can adjust the radius of the brush by dragging this to the right or to the left. And I just want a small radius here. And what I'm going to do is just paint those little areas back in. You see like this, all these areas like where I can see some of that centers of those flowers showing through and anything over in here. Not really. Over here was one, I believe. Yeah, that was one in there. But you get the point, right? You can see, and I think that is really helpful. And if you want to bring some details back in other little places, you can go ahead and, you know, paint little details in, which might be a good idea. Now, I originally didn't do this when I was figuring this video out, but I think I want to do that. I want to bring little bits of detail in here and kind of sculpt these little uh, flower petals a little bit. And I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, and I think that should work. Now, here is the before, and here is the after. I just like the softer look. I still have the painterly look, but it's a lot softer. Now, if I shut off the precision detail, remember when I first put extra detail in? Let's see what it looks like if I shut this layer off. Let me shut it off. As you can see, it's super soft now. So when I turn it back on, I can see, yeah, I did need that layer. So it's experimentation is really the key here in Topaz Studio to try things. Don't be afraid to do that. I can't encourage you enough to try things and experiment. If you watch my creative toolbox series, you know when I do impressionistic uh, images, I always like to work with precision detail and precision contrast. So now let me do precision contrast and add a little bit of contrast here. Now, what I want to do is take the micro contrast. This is more like sharpening and you can see it getting sharper, right? And I keep playing with detail in this image. I'm taking detail away. I'm putting detail back, but there is like a 0.46. Let me go with low. Let's add a little bit of low. And I think right about there for the low and medium. I want to do a little bit of medium as well like around right there. And as far as high, I'm going to do a negative on the high. So I'm going to pull that back to somewhere right around there. Now at this point, I like the image and I could be done right here, but I like to experiment. So what I want to try and do is remove this extra contrast from the background and just have it on the flower and maybe just this part of the vase and maybe on the shadow here. So what I'll do is come up to the layer mask and click it and what I want to do is invert my layer mask by clicking those three dots and clicking invert. And now I'm going to click on brush and I want to go to 100% transparency like this and adjust my radius on my brush to maybe a size right around there. I can leave edge wear on. It's not going to hurt anything. My softness is at 50. And what I want to do now is just paint that detail and you got that nice red overlay so you can see what you're doing. I'm going to paint it on this area of the flower, all the beautiful flower here. All these beautiful petals like so. And see how that really pulls out there and the background stays soft. And the other thing I want to do is just paint it down maybe right along here on this face right there. And then on this area down in here, I like the way this looks, but I want to bring some of this... Uh, contrast out in some of these areas see how they pop a little bit and maybe down here in the in the shadow part of the vase and over here on these areas and maybe right across here maybe right here in this water right there as well and then on this shadow area down here let's paint a little bit of that across there or a lot across there that looks really cool i'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller on the radius and paint on my stem right like that and right like that. And I kind of like that. What do you think? Here is the before and here's the after, but doesn't that really pop really nice? What I want to do is go back to the impression layer by clicking on the impression layer right here and click on layer mask. And I think I can bring, it looks like I'm missing some of the detail of the edge right here of the face. So what I'm going to do is in with a layer mask, 
and let's click on brush and let's take our transparency up to about like 50 make my radius you know relatively small and just paint along this edge where this vase is and see if I can bring some of that detail back. Now it's a little dark, too dark right here. So let's take the transparency of this brush the whole way to the right to white. And let's just paint off some of that right there, just like that. And see how that just cleans that up. But now I have a little bit of an edge there in the vase and I think I needed that. Now let's go back up to the precision contrast layer. Now the nice thing about Topaz Studio 2, it's a non-destructive workflow. So once we open Precision Contrast back up, if we feel this effect is too strong, we could take the opacity and start to pull it back a little bit. You know, if it's a little bit too strong, and I might do that, just pull it back to, I don't know, like an 89. Now here is the before and here's the after. There's only one more thing I want to do. You see how this stem looks green here, but it looks a little brown right here. I'm going to fix that. Let's add one last filter and that's going to be an HSL color tuning filter. And I know this is going to be yellow, so I'm going to click right here. And all I want to do is, I don't care about the rest of the image, I'm just looking right here. I'm going to take the hue and drag this hue more towards green. And yeah, maybe right around there. That looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and click on the layer mask and let's click the three dots and let's invert that. And then let's just get a brush, click on the brush tool and drag this transparency slider the whole way to the right till we make that solid white, make the brush radius smaller. And let's just paint that stem and fix it just like that. See, now it's going to match better. Now, it may be a little too much saturation, so let's go back and click on HSL Color Tuning. And let me just take the saturation. Make sure you're on yellow. Click on the yellow. And I'll just take that saturation to the left just a little, little bit. And let's just tweak the hue. Make sure I got that just right. And I think... I think right there matches pretty good. It might be still a little too oversaturated. I think right there. So here is the before... And here is after. And I like that. And I think that is good. And now we are done. But hey, it's a good idea to get in the habit after you come up with a creation. Remember that one tutorial, if you watched it, where I said, you know, getting your own unique style. And you may want to apply this effect to several different images. Go ahead and save it as a look. So click Save Look, give it a name, and click OK. And it'll live in your looks. I've already done mine, so I'm not going to save a look again. So I'm just going to click Cancel. But save your look. And when you're all said and done, if you're happy with everything, all you need to do is click Accept. And that'll send you right back into Photoshop. And now we can take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. Well, I think this turned out really nice and I'm really happy with it. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. That way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. And also, please leave comments and questions. I'd really love to hear from you. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.